Okay, hello, welcome to Fundamentals of Chemistry 2. Um, check out the first Fundamentals of Chemistry lesson, um, and then with both of these, you should have a firm grounding, a firm basis of uh, chemistry, and that should help you out in future chemistry studies. Okay, let's move on. Right, um, the first way of representing uh, molecules is using these just the letters and the sticks really um, good for smaller molecules not so good for huge great big molecules you can also use these dot cross diagrams which actually show the electrons involved in the bonding so if we've got a covalently bonded chlorine molecule there and you can see all the electrons involved in the bonding the problem with those is they're in two dimensional and molecules are not two dimensional so you can use uh, these sort of board and stick diagrams 3d board and stick diagrams um, now these are good because they're using things like protein modeling where you know scientists are trying to look at the the shape of an active site of a protein or something like that um, normally used in much larger molecules um, you can look at double or triple bonds like this uh, this ethene molecule down here or the most common simplistic and commonly used form is, is just using the the symbols the CH4 and and the word methane let's move on let's move on to balancing equations so on the left hand side we have reactants on the right hand side we have the products the reactant the reactants turn into the products and if you know anything about conservation of mass you know that the reactants have, will have the same mass as the products um, so we've got uh, a chemical reaction here we've got magnesium plus oxygen goes to magnesium oxide so there's an oxidation of magnesium and we've got the word equation and we've got the symbol equation now, if you've got time, if you're having trouble understanding balancing equations, it can be a good thing to draw the actual atoms out underneath. It's a bit time consuming, but it can help you understand it if you're struggling with how this all works. Or maybe you're in an exam and you've, you've got to the end and there was that one question that you couldn't understand, the balancing equation question, and you've got five minutes left on the clock. Just draw out some atoms and see if you can make it work that way. Okay, let's have a little look at this sort of more simple one. So we've got our um, atom of magnesium there. We've got our O2, two atoms of oxygen, making up a molecule of oxygen, and they go on to make magnesium oxide, which is a kind of white powdery substance. Um, you can see, obviously, now you've drawn those atoms, it's easy to see that they do not balance. If you weighed everything on the left and you weighed everything on the right, they would not be the same. <clears throat> now, what are we going to do about this? Well, the first thing is you cannot mess with these little numbers. That's what the, one of the biggest rules of balancing equations. Don't mess with the little numbers. You can't just take that out. You can't just call it O because oxygen goes around in pairs. This is this is the rule. And what you also can't do is you can't add a 2 to, to that. You can't say MgO2. Why not? Because there's no such thing as MgO2. It doesn't exist. You've just created a new molecule. No, you cannot mess with the little numbers. So what are we going to do here? we can only put big numbers in front so what we're going to do is we're going to add another MgO <clears throat> so now we've got two lots of MgO okay we've sorted our little oxygen problem out we had two on one side and one on the other now the, 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 the yellow ones fit but we've given ourselves another problem we've given ourselves another magnesium so all we need to do is give ourselves another magnesium over this side is that balanced? well it's easy to see from the diagram that it is Okay, here's another example. Uh, have a go, pause it, have a go, see if you can do this, um, and then I'll take you through it. So, moving on, let's go through this one. Uh, we've got, and let's have a look at the left. We've got one sodium on the left and one on the right. I should say, you don't need to put a little one next to that sodium to denote one. If, if, a, if an element has not got a letter next to it, a number next to it, then there's only one of them. So there's no number next to that Na, and that means there is only one. So we've got one sodium on the left. On the right, there's no number next to that one either, so there's one. So one on the left, one on the right. Fantastic. What about hydrogens? We've got two on the left, and we've got three on the right. So that doesn't balance. So let's start there. Remember, you cannot mess with the little numbers. So what we're going to do is we're going to put a two in front of the sodium hydroxide, the NaOH. So now how does that stack up? Now we've got two on the left and four on the right. What do we do now? Let's put a 2 in front of the water molecule. And we've got 4 on the left 
and four on the right. Great, that's our hydrogen sorted out. We've got four on the left and four on the right. Now we've messed around with that NaOH. We've given ourselves too many sodiums, haven't we? So now we've got one sodium on the left and two on the right. So what are we going to do? Big number in front of that sodium. Excellent. Right, now where do we stand? We've got two on the left, two sodiums on the left, two sodiums on the right. We've got four hydrogens on the left and four hydrogens on the right. Now what about these oxygens? We've got two oxygens on the left and we've got two on the right. So yes, that balances. Um, if you're new to this, then it can be trial and error. You just keep adding numbers and if it doesn't work, you try again, you try again until you get it. But with practice, you will get it and it will become easy, I promise you. Okay, let's look at exothermic and endothermic reactions. Exo means outside, so it gives off heat, gives heat to the outside. Endo means inside, okay? It takes heat in or takes energy in. So an exothermic reaction is one that gives out heat. And it does this because the amount of energy that you need to give this reaction to get it going is less than the amount of energy that you get from the overall reaction. So overall, uh, uh, you get energy out, okay? In an exothermic reaction, you get more energy out than you put in. What about an endothermic reaction? Here's a graph for an endothermic reaction. You've got to put a huge amount of energy in to get less energy out. So overall, it's going to be absorbing energy. It's going to be taking energy in. And if you have an endothermic reaction in a test tube, it will feel cold because it's absorbing the heat energy of the surroundings. So that's endothermic reactions. So there we are. That's fundamentals of chemistry. Have a go at the questions. Um, pause the video and uh, check out the answers. Thank you very much for watching.